<sighs> I can't believe I lost my one year post COVID theater experience virginity to this show. Hello everyone, how are you doing? My name is Shri and let's waste some time together. So I was about to make another video on a favorite intellectual of mine. Um, I'm not gonna say who it is because I want that to be a secret. So I was kind of getting ready to make that video but it's literally stone raining outside. It's a hailstorm going outside. I'm gonna try to, you know, mute out that sound as much as I can, but um, I just, I, I can't concentrate on it anymore, but I'm gonna make that uh, next to this. Um, but I thought that I could just make a shorter video just to kind of, you know, have some content ready and I don't <laughs> spaz out. So I decided to kind of make a kind of mini rant. I don't wanna call it exactly rant, but it's like a little complaint. From what I have seen about this movie, there's only been like some positive reviews. I haven't seen the reviews yet because I like to keep reviews away from me so they don't manipulate my opinion on the movie. So I haven't seen the reviews, but so far with like Chris Stuckman's expression in the uh, on the thumbnail or Jeremy John's smile on the thumbnail kind of tells me that everybody had a positive experience with the movie. So before watching that, I decided I could kind of make my own little video on it, kind of give a little bit of a, um, I, I hope not a controversial opinion, but it's a little gripe I have about, about the movie. So let's get to it. So I guess I am a little late to the train. I was kind of debating whether or not I should go to a theater and experience the film. Theaters were closed in my country, in India, for a very long time. I feel, I feel for their for the businessmen out there who had their own movie theaters i feel for you okay but because of covid of course everything was closed for a long time and i kind of missed it because i like watching a movie in a theater okay i like to experience movies in a theater i can i can be fine at home if i watch something like marriage story on tv because it's a drama but when it comes to like juggernaut like fights uh, like real battles between monsters and kaijus and robots i like to watch it on the big screen it's something about the whole experience of it it just makes me just so giddy you know like ever, ever since i was a child i love doing that so godzilla vs kong it released digitally as well i'm sure of it but it also released in the theaters here so for like three weeks I was debating whether or not to go and a friend of mine just said you know what just screw it we'll take all the necessary protocols we will suit up from top to bottom I wore a cap I wore a little beanie I wore glasses it wasn't even a 3d movie but I wore glasses not 3d glasses but just glasses I wore a mask I had my sanitizer and everything I just went there and they did a good job they had like a 25% capacity running so there were no one there was no one else near us in the theater so that was really good I watched it and the sole purpose of me going to the Godzilla movie was to watch this monster fight. I didn't want anything else. I just want, wanted to watch a giant, a boxing match between two titans. That's all. And it was advertised that way. So don't come for me. That was what I was expecting. I sat there. I watched it. Mm, I... <laughs> Do you know what happens? Like, I'm not into the boxing world, but I'm pretty sure everybody has experienced this. Do you know when you really anticipate a boxing match between two like really good athletes and the fight lasts like 30 seconds? That's the kind of feeling I had watching Godzilla vs. Kong. Now, hear me out. I enjoyed the movie, but there were a few things I feel could have done better could have been done better, which would have made the movie more enjoyable. Now, before I go into like the gripe about uh, Godzilla vs. Kong, I want to tell you why I enjoyed Godzilla King of the Monsters. Now, when Godzilla King of the Monsters first came out, I was kind of like not expecting too much from it because the, the Godzilla before that, I don't know when it was released, but the Godzilla before that really wasn't like up to the mark in my opinion, but it was still a good movie. Now, Godzilla King of the Monsters, when I watched it, I didn't watch it in the theaters, big mistake, I should have. I really liked the movie simply because it was a fight between so many titans, especially um, the three-headed dragon looking character. 
I don't know what, what it was called, Kidora? Kidora, yeah. Kidora versus Godzilla was just so much fun. I didn't enjoy uh, Kong Skull Island that much simply because of like the problem of, you know, lots of people. It was focused a lot on Tom Hiddleston and everybody else. I'm fine with it, but I'm not really like, I'm, I'm going there for Kong. I'm going there for Skull Island. I'm not going there for Tom Hiddleston and whatever, but Samuel L. Jackson stole the show. Let's just say, put it that way. But Kidora, was just like a show stealer for me. It was such an epic monster. Not only that, there was like this bat creature that crawled out of a volcano. You know what I'm talking about, right? If you watched Godzilla King of the Monsters, you know what I'm talking about. I don't want to spoil it for other people. I really enjoyed it simply because it was like a fight between lots and lots of monsters and people kind of took like a back seat. They, kind of, they, they were just there to fill in the lore of these creatures. Godzilla, the one before that, kind of disappointed me a little bit in that region because it was not about the monsters that much, but it was about Brian Cranston. I have to be a little honest, I did not go to the Godzilla movie for Godzilla at the time. I went there for Brian Cranston. I was just, I, I just freshly was out of Breaking Bad. I really wanted to watch him in other works. And he wasn't like in a lot of other movies except for like Trumbo. Um, well, I think Trumbo, yeah, it was about a writer and stuff, but I wanted to watch him in something else. And I went there for that, but that movie really uh, disappointed me when it came to like Brian Cranston. He was there and they wrote such a good character for Brian Cranston. The, the, the backstory was there. He was just, I was expecting a lot, but they kind of, spoiler alert, <laughs> kind of killed him off and now the movie was about his son who was even worse than Sam Worthington if that's even possible I was I was not invested in his son they, if I might have been invested in his son if they wrote him a little better if they added a little more scenes with him like the amount of emotional toll Brian Cranston's character went through the son didn't go through that much so let's just put it that way uh, the first movie kind of disappointed me because there was not too, the human element, especially the Brian Cranston element, was not um, explored that much. King of the Monsters, I loved it because it was about the monsters, but the human element I didn't really care for. Godzilla vs. Kong, I did not care about the people. When you... Okay. I'm gonna calm down <laughs> so that I don't lose my mind and go off on a tangent, but I just want to say. Am I the only one who didn't care about the people in Godzilla vs. Kong simply because it was advertised as a movie that was a death, that was a fight to the death, that was a death match between a chimp and a lizard? It was... Uh, am I the only one who went there for this boxing match and not to watch f uh, backstories about Millie Bobby Brown's character or everybody else or Alexander Skarsgård's uh, Stellan Skarsgård, I don't know, whoever Skarsgård's uh, backstory or the villain or what they were planning in the backseat. Am I the only one who didn't care about that? I can't be the only one, right? I went there expecting a full-on boxing match and what did I get? Five minutes of action, ten minutes of action maybe if you put it all together, but otherwise, the entire hour long 40 minutes of the movie is just about the people. It's just about them talking. It's just about them like planning stuff and giving us backstories, which is fine. You need that. But there was just so much of that. King of the Monsters did it so much better. They threw aside the people in that movie and be like, bitch, get out of the screen. This is about Ghidorah versus Godzilla. How can a movie that was just about like Godzilla and these other monsters be better than something that was advertised as a boxing match between two great titans? How? Okay. The second thing I had a problem with, I'm sorry, mosquitoes are killing me right now. <laughs> the second thing I had a problem with is, ugh, Every time Millie Bobby Brown's character showed up with that kid from Deadpool and this other guy who was supposed to be like an engineer who was like a who was like a Joe Rogan wannabe with his own podcast about conspiracy theories and being all Alex Jones and shit. Every time those three people came out, I was like, please God, please, not another scene between them, not another scene between them. And there were just so many scenes with them in it, and they were trying so hard to be the comedic element. I'm like 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to scream. I'm going to scream. Where is Godzilla? Where is Kong? Where are they? They're just chilling. 70% of the movie, Godzilla is underwater and Kong is just like scratching his balls or something. That's what's happening. And I swear to God, I don't wish ill on people, but every time those three characters came up, I was like, I hope Godzilla stomps these three people. I hope Kong just like sits on Millie Bobby, Bobby Brown by accident. I hope like Godzilla stands on the, the, the kid from Deadpool by mistake and be like, oops, I just, I just killed a kid, I'm so sorry. But I'm like 500 feet tall, so I can't really see this kid who is insignificant in this movie. Um, I know I'm going off on a tangent. I know it's like not that important. I know maybe some people enjoyed the people in the movie, but I'm really sorry, okay? You have movies in the past, like Pacific Rim, for example, who had a great balance between the people in the movie versus the Jaegers and Kaijus in the movie. Now the Jaegers and Kaijus, especially the Jaegers, the, the, the big robot uh, robots, they don't even have uh, like a soul in them, you know what I mean? Like they're operated by people. But every time the, the, the Jaeger comes up, like Gypsy Danger shows up, there's like a personality to the robot simply because of the people operating inside it. But even then, you forget about the pilots operating the machine. You just think about like, wow, this is Gypsy Danger. Gypsy Danger became a character of his own. And more than half of that movie was about the, the boxing match between a kaiju and a Jaeger. Guillermo del Toro did it so right when, they, when he made that movie. It, this is why that, that movie is like much better than Transformers or everything else, because Transformers didn't have that balance between the people and the robots. The robots, they weren't re like really fleshed out and the people were like just props. So this movie could have done that, but I felt like this movie had an imbalance between a lot of people and a little to do with the, the monsters for a movie that was advertised as Godzilla vs. Kong. I went there to watch Godzilla vs. Kong. I, I have to give props to the movie. Every time those two showed up and had a throwdown and had like a alley fight, I was impressed. I was so like, you know, like, I, I, I was like, you know what? I paid for this, I came for this, and I'm not disappointed. I'm not disappointed in the fight scenes. Those fight scenes were something to live for. This is why I'm so like, I'm satisfied with the fights. I just wish there were more of that. Simply because 2020 was not a good year for movies. Nobody went to the theater. I didn't go to the theater. This was my first movie after the whole like 2020. I didn't once, I didn't go to the theater to watch a movie. So when I went, went to watch this, I was expecting a lot. And the fight scenes were fantastic. They executed it to perfection, but I wish just there was so much more of that and a little less of the people in it, you know? Anyways, I know I am late to the party. I know that Godzilla vs. Kong reviews are out. People have watched it. People don't care anymore about this movie, I guess. But whoever watches this movie, I hope I didn't waste your time. I hope, you know, like, <laughs> I, I hope I didn't piss you off. But this is just my opinion, a little mini rant about the film I had. Otherwise, I really did enjoy the movie. It's a seven out of 10 for me, but but, you know, it is what it is. I hope other people did enjoy the movie or if you had your own gripes about the film, let me know in the comments below, of course. Let's have a discussion. And thank you so much for watching and I hope I didn't waste your time. See you next week.